Uh, obviously excited about being here, uh, competing. We know we have a tough opponent in Gonzaga, um, who we played earlier in the year. Um, they have great front line, great guards, just great players in general, Hall of Fame coach. Um, I think the experience of playing them can, gives you a reference point, like it gives them a reference point. But I think it means very little. I don't think either team played very well in the game. I don't think either team shot very well in the game. So they had a lot of open looks that they don't they normally make in that game. So we're going to have to do a much better job defending them. We're going to have to do a much better job of taking care of the basketball. Um, we were very fortunate to turn it over as much as we did and still um, pull out the victory. So um, hopefully we can shore up some of those things, just like they're looking at film, trying to shore up some of the shortcomings that they had in the game also. But they've had a fabulous year and uh, have been very, very successful, obviously, for a long, long time. Thanks, Coach. Let's start out on the left side in the fourth row. Hey, Matt. Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. I asked Mark this question as well. You two guys have been consistently successful in a very changing landscape of your sport. How have you managed to adapt without compromising what makes your programs what they are? Right. Um, you know, I think for us, um, you know, we, we struggled, lost a couple years in a row like nine, ten years ago. Um, we didn't need to do a better job in recruiting. We needed to do a better job in evaluating. And, and at that time, you know, we made some adjustments and just we had to do a better job of digging in and getting. Obviously, you can see talent, um, but what comes with talent? You know, you want production. You want guys that are growing. But we, for us, we wanted people that wanted to get their education at Purdue, and we wanted that balance. And I think that's where we've gotten, we've had a really good balance where guys want to be at Purdue. Um, you know, it's not just the recruiting and you get them. It's, it's building a relationship, and you don't always have to be buddy-buddy with every single guy, but you have to be honest with them. And that's what we've tried to do is uh, just be as honest as we can and be a truth teller. And I, I think that's how we've really sustained a lot is by getting the right people in the room, getting the right players, you know, right combination of a, of a person and a player. First row on the left. The game in November, how is it different now, but also how is Purdue different now? Well, I think they're different just obviously looking at who they start. You know, inserting Greg into the lineup and Anton Watson's, um, you know, kind of durability and his ability to, to, to guard different people um, allows them to be bigger. But yet Greg has great, he has great size, but he, you know, his skill level shooting the basketball really helps him. He's competitive. You know, Stromer coming off the bench instead of starting, he still gives him that punch off the bench where he can shoot the basketball. He, you know, he goes to the glass just like Greg does. But um, just quality players. You know, he just kind of found the right mix. But they can play big and they can play smaller. And I, I think that flexibility for them has, has been really good. Um, but, but more than anything, they got really good guard play. I think your guards have to play well. Your guards have to take care of the basketball. You know, Nimhard and, and Hickman are two of the you know better guards in the country. Um, I, I just I like their combination. I think they, they they just have a little bit better combination. It seems to be more fluid for them. But the thing with Gonzaga is they can beat you in a lot of ways. You know, those guards can break you down. Those those bigs can get on the glass. You know, Graham Ike can score on the block. Um, they bring in Braden Huff and uh, who stretches the defense also. So you've got a lot of skill, you got a lot of size, but you also got playmaking guards. It's just a pretty good recipe for success. Go back to the fourth row on the left. Yeah, Coach, it's Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Um, I, we all know how mad this event is, and I think, um, well, basketball's been really good to you in life. It's re been really mean to you sometimes, too. I wonder how you process the latter. What's your method for processing yeah, when it's it, mean? Yeah, the game doesn't always love you back. Um, but you got to understand that going in. You know, you're going to play a game, one team's going to win and one team's going to lose. When you get used to winning a lot, the expectations that you raise and get it, you know, for your program makes it even harder than that. You know, we've been beat up a lot or I've been beat up a lot for the people that have beaten us. You know, we're the higher seed, we should win, this and that. And I always say that takes away from your opponent. That's not fair to them. Like, they've earned it. Like, we didn't get cheated out of anything. Somebody beat us. And so I think for us, the most important thing to do and what we've always tried to do is 
be honest with ourselves in evaluation no matter how your season ends so you can hopefully make those corrections. But you can't correct your team or you can't correct your players unless you correct yourself. And so that's what I've always tried to be, no matter what it comes from. Because everybody has an answer, right? You know, you, you listen to everybody, you listen to nobody. You know, you have to be honest and you have to understand things and you can't be stubborn, you know, too. And so for us, I just kind of looked at it as our skill level had to be better. But our, we had to have improvement from people. I felt like we had some guys that could have shot a lot better for us the previous year. But it's their first year, or they just didn't shoot well. I believe that they were going to shoot better this year, and they did. We had to add some quickness, some athleticism. I think we've done that in Cam Heidi and Miles Colvin. And then Lance Jones has really given us a punch. You know? And so now Braden Smith makes improvements. Mason Gillis is solid as a rock. Uh, Trey Kaufman Wren gets some more minutes. He can score the basketball. So just the combination of those things, we felt like we had to make those type of improvements. But um, we also didn't want to run run from anything. And so like, and some of our losses aren't on our players. Last year's is on our players, right? But like we've had some other losses that that way. And I think that builds up. You know, we've gotten into the, the second weekend a lot, but we have we've only advanced to the Elite Eight one time. And so, like, you know, we've raised those expectations. But um, like I said, just, just trying to be as honest as we can and then get to work. You know, try, we can still outwork people and we can still be better together than other people no matter who they sign. Let's flip it over the right side in the second row. Hey, Coach. Eddie Pels from AP. Um, we're in this supposed era of, you know, positionless basketball where right. everyone can do everything no matter how big or small they are. Obviously, you have a... a kind of an exceptional seven foot four kid, but right. is there anything about positionless basketball that can still fit in to what you do or do you throw it all out? Yeah, no, no, we, we take the, um, the best players that we have and we circle around them, you know, no matter who they are. You know, we were in the Elite Eight five years ago and we didn't have a real post up option. Travion Williams was just a freshman and he backed up. We had a seven three center that was a diver. And, and he wasn't a really a low post guy, even though he'd get a couple baskets here and there that way. So we just try to take our best players, and that's how we start in our recruiting. Like I always tell guys, they always they want to know where they are. And I always tell them, well, if you're one of our top two or three scorers, here's how I see you. And if you're not one of our top two or three scorers, then you're going to have to fit around offensively those top two or three scorers, right? And so you just started off right away in recruiting to where you can't tell 13 people, like, you know, here's going to be your role. It just doesn't work that way. But there's a lot of guys that do that because they want to sign good players. Then they just deal with it later. I'd rather get that trust right away or I'd rather lose the player. You know, I don't want to get somebody on false pretenses. And then you can build from there. And then you can grow from there. And then you can just be honest with them about it. But I, I like the positionless deal. Like, I, it's not something like I'm away from. I just happen to have Zach Eady. I'm a fool if I don't anchor it around him, right? So we've learned a lot through the years, you know, with our size, you know, from Carl Landry to Jawan Johnson to Caleb Swan again, A.J. Hammonds, Isaac Haas, Travion Williams, Matt Harms. Um, we've learned a lot. You learn from your players because how people deal with it and how people go. But he's kind of the exception to the rule. You know, he can really move and he's so physical and he's skilled. But what probably separates him is his unselfishness and his competitiveness. He's a very, very competitive player. He goes, you know, big guys will take some plays off. He doesn't take plays off. You know, he runs and he, he does everything. He's a complete player. But the unselfishness, I think, really separates him because if you double, he's a passer. And if you don't, he's a scorer. We're going to take two more on the left, and then we'll come back to the right. Myron? Myron Metcalf, ESPN. Uh, Matt, it feels like momentum is pushing us toward an expanded tournament. Uh, if that happens, how do you feel about it? And what should that look like if the tournament expands? Yeah, I, I would rather. Um, it stay the way it is. I, but I also have been in a lot of those committees where I think it's important to shut up and listen to other people. So I'd love to sit in the room and listen to, to the why, you know, because I think that's, that's part of collaborating with everybody, which head coaches really have kind of been left out of that equation um, when it comes to collaborating about what's best for the game. Um, I'd rather see the room change. I'd rather see that. If you, if you look on committees, whether it's the executive committee, the D1 council, um, the Rice Commission, go on and on and on. There's no current head coaches sitting in those rooms. And it doesn't mean that we got to stir the drink or make the decision, but just listen to from our vantage point 
no different than you listen to a student athlete from their vantage point or a former player or an athletic director or media, whatever. Everyone has an opinion from where they sit. And I think if we can do some things of that nature, we'll improve our game, but we'll also improve our selection process. Back row. Hey, Coach. Sam Sprunger, uh, Big Talk ASAP Network. I asked your guys about him, but I want to get the coach's perspective, too. What does Lance Jones do for this team that maybe not taking away from last year's team, but brings differently to the success that this year feels maybe a little different? Yeah, you know, he's got a great competitive spirit. Um, you know, he comes to practice, comes to games. He's, you know, he's excited about playing. Um, you know, he chose Purdue. Didn't talk about name, image, and likeness one time. You know, when he made a decision, you know, he wanted his thing was winning. His thing was getting into the NCAA tournament, trying to win a Big Ten championship, and that jumped out right away. Um, from just a practical standpoint, like his athleticism, his quickness, he gives us another ball handler. He gives us another defender, a guy that can guard a point guard, but also can guard off the ball. So that flexibility really helps us, and it really helps Braden Smith. Second row on the right. Hi, Matt. Uh, Jamie Strashen from uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Um, obviously, Zach Eady's come a long way since he first arrived on campus. Uh, can you talk about his uh, evolution as a player and kind of right. where you see him kind of fitting into the rich legacy of this sport? Uh, and second question, uh, NCAA looking at uh, limiting uh, prop bets around athletes. Uh, can I get your comments on that and sure. how you see gambling affecting your sport over what you've seen the last season? Right. You know, Zach's evolution, um, you know, really starts with hard work and improving his body. So each year he's gotten better from a physical standpoint. Um, I think his experiences with the Canadian national team has been very beneficial for him. You know, when, when he played in the 19 and unders, you know, he made the all tournament team. He played a lot. He got that experience. Now with the World Cup, with the national team, he didn't play a lot. But you get a, you know, you, you have to see how the sausage is made. Like a lot of people just see great players from Canada and it's just like, it's magic. No, they, they've had to work really, really hard to get there. And for him to be able to see guys that are on that team and how they work every day, how they handle themselves um, is gold. You know, because that's what you want. Like a lot of people don't understand about being a pro. Being a pro has nothing to do with athletics. There's pros in this room. You know, there's school teachers that are pros. Like, who comes early, who stays late, who's there? The guy I played for, Gene Cady, called it a company man. Like, learn to be a company man and do what's best for your company, and things will work out for you individually. Um, your second question, go to your second question again. Oh, the prop bets. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you're, you're, you're talking about an individual player, like, you're, you're just asking for trouble, right? You're just asking for trouble. So hopefully they can eliminate that, and, and, and that's not part of the process. But overall betting, that's, that's where we are. You know, that, that, that's where we are. So it, it puts a lot of athletes, a lot of coaches, you know, in some difficult positions where 99.9% .9 of the time it's probably not going to be anything. But they're always, and we have a lot of examples for where they have been. You know, whether that's a referee or that's been a player. You know, we're going back in, you know, in basketball a long, long time there. There's, there's a lot of things to jump out. And sometimes it doesn't happen for 10, 20, 30 years, but we have all those examples where they do. So anytime you do that, you're going to have to govern it. And, you know, how do you go about, you know, things of that nature? And so hopefully it's something that, you know, we can protect so we can protect, excuse me, and protect the integrity of the game. Um, but, but hopefully that there's, we, we don't have those prop bets. You just don't want individual names. You know, this player here gets seven assists, you get money, this and that, because you're dealing with really, really young guys at 18, 19, 20 years old, and you don't want that outside influence to affect them and affect their eligibility. We'll take two more for Coach Painter, starting on the left on the fourth row there. Hey, Matt. Brendan Quinn from The Athletic. Um, you talk about being a truth teller with, with your players, and I wonder when, when there's such like a, a clear cut point that of success for fans and for everyone. It's just everyone just talks about the final four, right? Like, right. How do you approach that, you know, with, with your guys? And has that been something that you've developed and learned about of, you know, what right. to say, what not to say, history lessons, things like that? Yeah. How do you just deal with that whole kind of like, you know, just thing? Right. Your well, head? your expectations, your best season. So this is my 19th season at Purdue. So if we don't win the Big Ten or go to an Elite Eight, we had a bad year. That's a hair harsh, but it's the way it is. And so you just want to keep moving that bar. So, you know, like some of the guys that get treated unfairly, I'd love to be them. 
I love to be someone who wins a national championship and goes to Final Fours, and then you go to a Sweet 16 and like, what the hell happened? I, you know, I'd love to have that issue, right? You know, and um, but that's what we're working towards. You know, we're working towards being able to to be a program that can consistently get into the tournament in advance and have those long runs, but also not lose our soul in the process. One more question in the front on the left. Vedant the Global Kid Media. Coach Painter, six years ago in this press room, I said each the NCAA tournament's a book and each team has their own unique chapter. This year again in 2024, Purdue has a unique chapter. What is it gonna take to get to Phoenix? For us, I think it starts uh, with taking care of the basketball. I think a lot of times people want like a, a, a good catchphrase or an, uh, like a, a cute answer. Um, we're 25 and 0 this year if we have 13 or less turnovers. That, that's held true for us. Um, we're a great offensive rebounding team. Overall, by the numbers, we're a great rebounding team. I think we can be better. So if you can control that possession war, and then you have the first or second best three-point field goal percentage in the country, and then you have Zach Eady, you're, you're just keep giving yourself a chance. And what I mean by keep giving yourself a sh chance is if you're taking quality shots, and now some of the, like before when we have those turnovers and it gets past that, like you, you just reflect back on the game when you lose and you're just like, just get the ball up to the rim, right? Because so, he's very good at soft misses. When you, when you get long misses, that's not him. That's going to be a guard, right? So if you, if you take really good shots, you're going to have more soft misses. So if you take him away from things and you want to full front him, he is in rebound position. So if you can have soft misses and you're around him, he is in perfect position and he's going to get that or he's great at the tap backs. So like from a functional standpoint for us to be able to, to win two games here, it's like winning the first two games of the season for us or the two games in the middle. Like nothing changes for us. Nothing changes from us from last year. We've just changed personnel. We've tried to be more efficient and we've just tried to be better at what we do. Yeah, hey, it's just awesome to uh, be back to another sweet uh, 16. As I told the guys, like, uh, I mean, it's, it's just a great week. It's, it's such a fun week to advance and have a little bit of time to hang out and enjoy each other. And I think that's really, really important with this group because this group, I've had some really, really close teams, but this group's as close as, as any of them. And I also told them, like, as good as this week is, the, the next week gets even better and is the best week. So uh, uh, but we're, we're fired up. We know we got our, our, uh, our hands full. We've played Purdue earlier in the year, and they're a great team and been great uh, throughout this whole year. Thank you. Let's go to questions for Coach Few, please. And we'll start on the front left. Need to get a mic to him, please. No. Left, right. <laughs> they're, like my, they're like my team. <laughs> Anybody, uh, let's just yeah. get a roll in here. Everybody, take a crack here. Brian Newbert from goldenblack.com. Coach, can you just kind of tell us how your team is different from November, but also how Purdue is different from what you've seen watching this week? Yeah, hey, I, I think we're both different. I, I, I just, I know in our case, we're vastly different. Um, we had some, whew, we had some pretty rough patches there early if you watched some of our practices and even some of our early games. But uh, um, we actually played really, really hard against them the first time. Uh, we just turned the ball over too much and shot way, way, way too many uh, uh, threes. Uh, so I think hopefully we'll get that cleared up. We're sharing it better, and I think we got, we, we're, much more purposeful on the offensive end, um, but you know they, they, they're 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 better too. So uh, I think that'll be the the biggest challenge there. Vedant Gupta from Global Kid Media, Coach View. Since I was eight years old, for nine years we see the Zags consistently in the Sweet 16, and of course the fantastic handstands in the locker room. I don't know if they were fantastic. They were they were moved by emotion, but pretty pretty marginal on the execution. Well, they inspire me. <laughs> I got to know from then to now, how has your approach changed to these Sweet 16s? Um, I mean, I, I, hey, I'm, like I said at the start of this thing, excited as ever. I think uh, even for me, I, I mean, you know, I take nothing for granted uh, any of these years, but I think this one probably feels as special as any just because, you know, we were, we were behind the eight ball there for a while. 
you know, and, and uh, you know, there was a lot of doubts, and, and we had to really buckle down and, and play great down the stretch even to get in this tournament, you know, which is it's really, really hard to get into, and it's even harder to move on to a, a Sweet 16. So, uh, you know, I think in lieu of all that, uh, you know, this one feels great, and it also feels great just kind of going through the journey with this group. I mean, they didn't, they never wavered. They stuck together. They stayed really, really coachable. And, uh, you know, I think that's been rewarding too. Okay, we got two questions in the third row starting here on the end. Hey, Coach, uh, Eddie Pels with AP. Good to see you yeah, again. Yeah, you too. Um, you know, the Zach Eady issue, uh, you, uh, can you kind of describe the challenge of dealing with somebody that unique? And also, if there's any advantage that you are one of those few teams that's Played him a couple times. Uh, hey, first of all, phenomenal, phenomenal player, and just you know needs to be congratulated for putting together these seasons to be you know college player of the year two years in a row, um, and just yeah, I mean I've been doing this a long, long, long time, and there's just we you just have never dealt with something like Zach, uh, you know that size. But yet, that good of a, a player, I mean, he's really developed his touch. Uh, his ball goes in now. It's very soft. Um, great passer if you do choose to double team him. Um, shoots free throws very, very well. Um, obviously, at that size, really, really impacts the game on, on the defensive end. So, I mean, he's an entity that you just don't, don't see. The, the positive is we have seen him. We played him in the PK-85. Um, early a year ago, and then I, like I mentioned, we play, we just we played him in the Maui tournament, uh, you know, at Thanksgiving. So at least we've had, we've felt his size and and his strength, and and then and then also played against a really really good Purdue team. So if anything, we can draw some, on some of those experiences. One more in the third row on the left. Uh, Dana O'Neill with the Athletic. Dana finally <laughs> makes it back with the Zags. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thank you. Um, Coach Painter brings a sort of burden to this Final Four, like to, or to this Sweet 16, to try to get to the Final Four. You carried that for a little while. I think every coach carries it for a little while. How do you manage that? I, mean, I, I just think you just uh, totally unequivocally just focus on the task at hand, and it's just kind of a next game mentality. I mean, I, I think they've done a wonderful job with that. They, they've hit it head on throughout the whole year. It seems like, and all the way back to the preseason, and uh, yeah, you just kind of go next game mentality, and and uh, uh, you know, man, th it, it certainly hasn't affected them in this tournament. I mean, they've been lights out so far, you know, in these these first two games. So uh, now I think all that stuff's off, and now they're now they're now they're playing, and they seem to be playing their best basketball, at least based on these last two outings. Front row here. Uh, Dave Bowling, Ken. Uh, Coach, uh, when you watch Ben play, do you see a little bit of throwback zag in him and his style and combativeness, but with new zag skills and, and talents? Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't. I think well, the zags have always. We've always been like that. You know, I think sometimes you get this old zag, new zag stuff. I mean, first of all, those. The old Zags were really, really good and talented, and our new run are have been really, really tough and got a lot of old school to them. And uh, what he is is he's just he is a Zag, right? I mean, just heart and soul, and and just I mean, he just embodies everything our program's about: his toughness, his how he prepares. How he just values team and just and really works at keeping everybody together and and then again this particular group just really really rallies around him you know and really you know and we figured that out uh, so it's just important to have him around and on the floor because they really respond to him. Right side in the fourth row. Uh, Travis Green from Crim Two News in Spokane. Hey Mark, uh, I know you talked about it a little bit earlier with both teams being different than when you played earlier this year. And we know from following you guys this season, specifically you guys, how much can you draw from that matchup? Are you going to look at that previous game heading into this? or? Yeah, no, no. We've looked at it a lot. I mean, look, 
both of us will change, but we're not going to change that much. I mean, we kind of are who we are. And like I said, especially when you're dealing with somebody as special as a Edie, uh, you know, we've we've at least experienced it. So we're not trying to describe it to our guys and and show other teams playing against it. We actually played against it, uh, so we can obviously draw on those times when we were successful and try to correct the ones when we're when we're not. And it's not just about him. I mean, uh, Braden Smith's had a great year and. You know, uh, I mean, they've been great. You know, this year and they got great balance. And uh, yeah, I'm just you know, Matt's as good a coach as there is in all the college basketball. He gets puts them all in the right spots and places, and they execute perfectly. And then you know, they're constantly changing and subbing and putting putting more skilled guys in these positions and these actions to make it really really hard to guard. So uh, it, it'll be fun. Uh, you know, trying to deal with all that. Second row on the left, Coach. Lafayette, General and Curry, you're kind of going off of what you just said. I think Matt's done a good job of getting the role players to buy into those roles, you know, seven, eight deep. What is the challenge in that? And when you've got a team that's this good, I think those are the guys that, that obviously make a difference when you get this far in the tournament. Oh, yeah, I mean, they have a lot of weapons, a lot of weapons. And so just I think it's really imperative that our guys, you know, really, really dial into personnel <laughs> and they, they – they all have their different strengths, you know, the ones that he does bring off. And so shooters, we got to, you know, make sure we do a great job on them. I think they're most dangerous when they're making a bunch of threes, you know, like they did the last game. And, and uh, um, so we got to do a great job there. And then we got to understand when shooters aren't in, obviously we got to shore up the glass or shore up duck ins inside and, and uh, you know, all of the above. And all the while, you know, keep those guards you know, in front of us and, and uh, do a good job there, especially in transition. They heard us in transition over in uh, uh, Hawaii also, so we need to do a better job there. Last two for Coach. On the left side in the front row, Chris. Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press. Mark, uh, kind of along those same lines, how have their guards maybe played off of Edie? And how has you seen, in the more recent games, how have you seen the changes uh, with their backcourt based on that? Well, I mean, their backcourt was good, really good against us in Hawaii. So especially uh, Smith was great, I thought. Um, I mean, Gillis is, is shooting it great right now. Obviously, yeah, that's what Lawyer does. Um, the best thing they do is they just all, I mean, they've had so many reps together now. They, they all play so well together. They're excellent uh, post feeders their timing and, and when and where they find him. And then, uh, you know, they're, they're dangerous, especially on, on those ball screens. You got to shore him up rolling, but you also have, you know, these guys can make plays. And then I think Jones has been a, an, a really, really good addition for him, you know, from when we played him two years ago in Portland to this year. I mean, he does so much. Um, he's, he's, he's a tough guard, and then he's a handful on the other end, the defensive side of things. Last one, third round. Hey, Mark. Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. You and Matt both have run your programs at a high level for a long time in changing landscapes. How have you adapted while still keeping kind of the core of how you do things the same? Gosh, Pat, that's that's been as big a ch bigger challenge than probably getting these dudes this year to play, uh, uh, you know, get back playing in a, in a good way. But uh, – you know what? It's it's kind of been easy in some ways because it's just Gonzaga and it's just how we operate and it's who we recruit and and it's who we always end up with. They just the guys we end up with just end up kind of belonging there. The guys we miss out on are frustrating at the time and uh, you know. But then you end up like, yeah, maybe he didn't belong here. It's, I always tell the staffs like that old Garth Brooks song. Thank God for unanswered prayers. Need to listen to the words to that sometime. It's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty good. But anyway, uh, but it is getting hard. It's getting really, really hard. And, I mean, we could spend three hours up here, Matt and I both, because <laughs> we've tried and tried. And the one thing I would say is they need to start listening, and and to us coaches, especially those of us coaches who have been around a long time and have tried to do it the right way, and. Uh, and you know, get it out of this bureaucratic, you know, 
stranglehold where nothing gets done and then you know this stuff just is is crushes us when it when it hits all the all these changes and we could all see it coming you know so hopefully we can get to the point where football coaches and basketball coaches are on these on the really decision making things that can kind of help us guide us through this thing because this this tournament is just so awesome and so special and so great i mean we've got to make sure we keep this thing rolling